If you're a startup founder, indie hacker, freelancer, there's a very good chance that you suck at logo design. This is probably something that you should probably outsource to an actual logo designer. However, I'm going to show you, those of you who are actually interested in taking care of everything themselves, including the logo design, how to create a logo that is actually good even if you suck at design and logo design in general. Now I'm gonna use this technique for the logo that I'm featuring in my Indie Hacking series. There's already a playlist out and the first video is already out and this video here, the logo design video, is a part of that playlist. So if you wanna see how I create this internet-based business, which is augmented reality to help pool players become better pool players, essentially, then definitely check out that playlist. Make sure to subscribe and let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. So for this project, I actually have two logos. First one is called Racked, and the second one is AR Trainer. So Racked is the overall company name, and then AR Trainer is that specific product that falls under that company. And I did that because I have a couple ideas and I might wanna sell two different products. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I design Racked in real time because it's so super simple and only take like a minute. Um, and then I'll show you the AR Trainer I came up I, the logo I came up with afterwards. So here in Adobe Illustrator, I have Racked. And when it comes to logo design, you wanna make sure whatever app you choose that it is truly vector. You don't really typically wanna design a logo in Photoshop, for, example, for instance. So Racked we have here, and I have Myriad Pro. That's just the default font that starts on Illustrator. And typically, you don't have to have a million fonts uh, when it comes to logos, all right? You don't have to have a million, just a few hand-selected fonts that work well in, in a lot of situations. And if we're build, building internet-based businesses, this type of business then, that would probably benefit from sans serif fonts, meaning the fonts that are nice and tidy without all the stuff hanging off the end of the characters, like for, for instance, Times New Roman, this would be a serif font. And so I'm gonna choose, uh, we're gonna choose Poppins. And I, this is kind of a joke, Poppins is real popular. Um, maybe not so much popular these days, Geist or Geist, that's a popular font these days. And both would work really uh, for this, this logo. And so the first thing I look at when I, I, I come across this word mark, a word mark, by the way, is just a logo that is comprised solely of the name of the business. Um, you can also have what's called a combination logo where you have a symbol and plus an actual logo. Um, but for, for this technique, we're just gonna stick with word mark only because that will simplify the process so much. So the first thing I'm looking at is the letter spacing. And I think there's a little bit too much space between the A and the C. And I just wanna get things kind of evened up as much as possible. We're gonna assume I'm gonna stick with this font. So I'm gonna hit Control Shift O and that converts it to outlines. Now I'm gonna take the direct selection tool and I'm going to just make some adjustments and push these over just so I can get some letter spacing that I personally like. I may just get everything a little bit closer because I like the concept of, you know, we're talking about pool balls that are racked nice and tight. So I think having the letters a little bit closer together uh, would make sense. And so I'll also show you the main technique that I've been talking about and it's a really cool technique that can help anybody who's not even a great designer. So, all right, I like this letter spacing so far. And what I'll do is I will zoom in and out with like Alt and then the scroll wheel here in Illustrator. And what I'll try to do, this is the technique. What I try to do is I look at the shape of the letters and I pair that in relation to the various concepts that are present in this company. So for instance, racked, all right, we have the letters R-A-C-K-E-D. Do we see any symbolism potentially that we can emphasize or create through just the letter structures themselves? All right, so that might be a little bit confusing. What I came up with using this technique, and hopefully this will kind of you know, make it really set, solidify in your mind what I'm talking about uh, is notice I in the D. Okay, so acoustic, you know, the long acoustic that you, you, hit, you hit the balls with, right? 
Well, at the end of a cue stick, it kind of looks like this, doesn't it? Like if we were to take, you don't have to follow along, but if we were to take the rectangle tool and we increase this, doesn't that pretty much look like the end of a cue stick? And when I saw that, I was like, that's it. We have our concept. This is one potential concept that we can use. So I'm gonna delete these. And in order to accentuate that, I'm gonna make a couple adjustments. So I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna get the rectangle tool and I'm going to just kind of do a cutout of this portion right here of the D. So I take the direct selection tool, we select this D character alone along with this little overlay while holding shift and make sure you go to window and you wanna choose Pathfinder and that shows you uh, this little dialogue right here. So what I wanna do with both of those selected is choose a minus front right here. So that creates white space in there. And what's cool is it kind of just gives you sort of like a negative slash empty space slash white space uh, highlight right here. Like that could be as a part of the pull stick almost or the Q stick. Um, and I really like this. You could get away with this logo in and of itself right there just because the D, it's a very abstract, very simplistic logo, but it works well and I really like it. Um, to, to really push it home, the concept though, if you wanna take it a step further, we could just take the D and give it a blue color, which would then become our primary color as a part of our identity design. And we could give it this blue, which is very similar to, you know, the, the blue chalk that you use at the end of the, the, the Q stick. And I, typically it's blue. And so that really kind of just drives it home. One more thing we could choose to do, I'm just gonna uh, replicate this and push this off, is we could take all the type and then the transform, the free transform tool right there, and then we can skew it and make it italicized slightly. This also gives it action because this is an action type thing. A cue stick is meant to be pushed. And therefore we have these slight, very abstract, symbolic representations of this business essentially. We have a cue stick here, which is the whole thing becomes a cue stick, which is emphasized by this tip here and the blueness and the fact that it's also action, so we make it italicized. This is the logo that I like, and it's a very good technique that you can use just to figure out something that's abstract that also hints to something that is relevant based on the business and what it's trying to do. Now I'm gonna show you the AR Trainer logo that I also came up with. Uh, the AR Trainer is a word mark plus a little combination logo. So if I come over here, I'll paste this in, and I'll show you what these two will look like together when paired. Oopsie, there we go. Let me make this area larger. Let's move this off. I'm gonna paste that new one in. AR trainer and we'll put racked like right around here ah yes so the concept behind AR trainer again it's the same font it's also italicized and we just have these three kind of offset uh, balls if you will and it's just a very abstract generalized logo it could also be I uh, it could be thought of as kind of like an arrow pointing forward as well, which is the same direction as how the italicized type is as well. And so these are the two logos. Um, Racked will sometimes be used independent of AR Trainer, but when AR Trainer is shown, I'll also show the Racked logo as well. And that is the identity design for this project. So as you can see, you don't need to be Picasso in order to create a solid logo. You just have to think in the abstract. And now that we have the logo for our project, in the next video of this series, we're going to continue on by covering the prototyping design of the actual user interface.